Welcome back to the Broadway show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Let's get back to it. Broadway's new farm to table fable, Shocked, is now nominated for nine Tony Awards, including Best Musical. Here's Beth Stevens with another edition of Building Broadway. Thanks, Tamsin. Writer Robert Horn is back on Broadway after winning a Tony Award for Tootsie. This time he's written Shucked, a corn-fed musical comedy straight out of the heartland. I sat down with him at his Midtown apartment. Okay, let's start with the very important stuff. Okay. What's a nice Jewish New York boy like you doing in this twangy corn musical? With Nashville songwriters. With Nashville, so uh, what I'm doing here is having the time of my life. I am writing comedy and working with a creative team that has been a dream and watching audiences appreciate the humor and let it all go and just laugh every night. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm able to do that and still be a good New York Jewish boy. And I'm writing about corn. Right, you're writing about corn. <laughs> Literally Who writing knew? about corn. Who knew? Although I, I used to eat cream corn growing up because my mom was not a cook. And so she used to open, we used to have a lot of canned foods. I lived on cream corn. Bring me back, how did you get started with this show and what was the original idea? Well, the original idea, I got started back in 2011 uh, like or 12. I got a call uh, from the Grand Ole Opry, who owned the rights to a once famous TV show called Hee Haw. Oh, very famous. And very famous show. And they wanted to turn it into a musical. And so I started working on what that could be, went to Nashville and met with a whole series of composers. The very last composers I met with were Brandy Clark and Shane McAnally, and it was a love fest. They were two proud out gay artists in a country world with that, especially at that time, was um, the, there was limited visibility on that. And we just started writing and we wrote a show, it was called Moonshine at that time, um, but it never really found its heart, it never really found its footing, the story didn't work. I think we were, as much as I appreciated having sort of that source material of Hee Haw, which really had no story. It was just a variety show on right. television. Um, it sort of held us back from where we wanted to actually go with the show. And that brand, I think, has not always worn well with time. And so we walked away from it and we said, I just don't know that this is going to work. And then each went our own ways, but stayed in touch. And then the world started to change, as we all know, and the w division and vitriol seemed to be in every artery of everywhere you went and read, and the, w the country seemed so divided. And I'm a city guy, and they're sort of country people, and I called them, and I said, we need to write about this. What I wanted to sort of write about was the idea that if you don't open your hearts to people who are different than you, you do not grow. And that's where corn came in. Because I knew I wanted to create a story about a town that had closed themselves off from the outside world. And I thought corn was great, that works perfectly. Because they were afraid that they would lose their way of life. I think there's so much, this fear of people are gonna come in and try to change what we believe. And I wanted to write a story about the different sides of that, not judge either one, but say it's not about trying to alter what you believe, but opening your heart to understanding that there are people who are different than you and we can all love each other. Well, that's the heart of Shucked. And yeah. I think people don't realize it has this beautiful heart because it's zinger after zinger. You are the yeah. king of zingers. I sort of am. <laughs> <laughs> the script even had alternate jokes within it. And I know you've been writing yeah. as previews have been going on. So how do you do it? How do you turn those out? Well, this is a terrible thing to say, but it's my job. And my mind sort of just, I can't do a lot. I was lucky I matched some colors today on this. But I, my mind just sort of works with hu through humor. And, and it, you just sit down and you do your job. The rehearsal process is my favorite part because I'm never happy. And so I'll constantly come in with new material and say, try this, try this. And a lot of that is my training in television. When I, when I was first starting in this business and I was working in, in situational comedies, you're doing it in front of a live audience and if it doesn't work, you are changing it on the spot and you and that and you flex that muscle and you sort of learn how to do it and i just love it i'm never happy with just one joke I, there's always five options for where you need a joke and this is one of the very few musicals that's not based on source material not adapted from a movie of course you have done that you did tootsie and won a tony award yeah. but that must feel like freedom for you. I, I love it. Writing an original musical, it's scary. It's so scary because there is nothing on that page. You are starting with nothing, but it frees you up 
to try so many things. You can really say what it is in your heart that you want to say because you are not um, beholden to anything that came before it. So walk us through your process because you have a lot of projects. There are a lot of characters that you're following in this show. Yeah. And like you said, you're facing the blank page. Yeah. So tell me how that looks when you're actually starting your work. I don't know if this is true of all writers, but what happens is you start, create, you create a world and you create characters and those characters literally live in your mind. So my husband is constantly like yelling at me because I have papers everywhere in my house because I'll say something or think of something and just you write it down. And the characters start to live in your mind and you start to think like them and they sort of take over and they talk to you. You know structure, so you say, I need to have a, I need to develop the conflict by here, I need to have a surprise here. And you say, I don't know. You say, I don't know a lot. It's a <laughs> lot, I don't know, I don't know. And then it sort of just comes together. You've written for Bette Midler, you've written for Dame Edna, uh, and of course, that's another Tony winner, yeah. and RuPaul. So that's speaking in someone else's voice. Yeah. And here, these, are, these characters are wholly made of the cloth of Robert Horn and your collaborators. Yes, but they take their they take on their own lives. Many people, myself uh, excluded, but you have a child and you create that child and you bring a child into the world and they suddenly create, have their own personalities. And characters are like that. Those voices all come from your head and your spirit and your creativity, but then they become something more than that. And I love that process. So let's talk about your background a little bit. Okay. Because I feel like you have been so influenced by early comedy and Broadway. Like that really yeah. is your sensibility. It's old school. Yeah, it's old school. What I really wanted to do, we'll see if I succeeded, but I really, I really wanted to do what shocked was to keep alive and sort of a old school, uh, real American style of comedy, which is that, which is that vaudeville joke driven comedy and define it for a new generation. What we're finding with Chuck is that the audience is filled with millennials because of it's had such a strong presence on TikTok and Instagram and social media and they're getting the humor. So that was my goal was how do I not make this feel dated in the comedy, but use a style of comedy that sort of has not been in favor as much and bring it back and redefine it with a hipness for a new generation. So are you sick of corn? I love corn. I'm so grateful for corn. There's so much corn humor in the show. It's a corny show in the most, I think in the best of possible ways. No, I, I am grateful for corn. Mm -hmm.